allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, with liberty and justice for all. All right, before we uh, approve the agenda, we, we need to uh, do a motion to uh, excuse uh, Mr. Brown. He has a funeral attended. Second. 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 All those in favor say yes. 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 Both say no. Mr. Brown's excuse. Next up is the approval of the agenda. I'll move to approve the agenda for November 28, 2023. Second. And moved and second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say yes. 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 Opposed say no. And is approved. Next up is the consent agenda. I will move that we approve the consent agenda for November 28, 2023. <coughs> I will second it. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussions? All those in favor of the consent agenda say yes. 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 Opposed say no. Consent agenda is approved. Next up is messages from the mayor, council, and city manager. Let's start with the council. Yeah. Well, hello. Hello. <laughs> this is my first um, official meeting, so thank you for excusing my last one as well as the upcoming ones that I have to miss. Um, and thanks to everybody who voted for me. I, it's an honor to be in this chair again, and I'm looking forward to serving um, my term. And um, yeah. I um, thank you to everybody that has shoveled your walk so far. It makes life a lot easier when you're wandering around. So if you haven't gotten to it yet, get out there. Thank you. Um, I just like to see all the Christmas lights that are up and going around in town. I like to see the holiday spirit and things rolling. And that's all I got. Let's do it. Well, I don't have too much either. With the I was, um, you know, I've read through all the, the materials that was out. I was, I've read a lot of contracts and legal stuff in the past, but boy, the water contract has an awful lot of nitty gritty detail back and forth. And that was <laughs> lots of detail in that one. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I can tell you that the uh, <coughs> township has uh, approved their portion of it. Okay. So they've agreed to our terms. She'll come up later. Steve. Uh, yeah, I would like to request a, an absence on uh, December 12, I think it is. The first meeting in December. Okay. So moved. Second. All those in favor of Steve's absence on December 12th, say yes. Yes. Always yes. say no. There you go. You're excused. Mm -hmm. Excused. Say all right, Same no, way. that's the only thing I have other than I agree with Jeff and my lights that I think they look really nice. They do. They do. Snow makes them look even nicer. No. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> oh, two things. One, I've been wanting to mention how um, pleased I am to see the holiday direct, uh, decorations downtown. I, I, I think they've, they have improved vastly since over the years, and I'm very glad to see that. And I was excited to go past and see the little um, fire pit on as well. I was excited to see that. And also, I want to thank uh, city um, uh, staffers, um, Scott, for the tour that we had yesterday. It was a long tour, it was three hours. Uh, we were in uh, City Hall, we went to the police department, we looked at um, the playhouse and um, DPW and talked to staffers and learned about what was going on and even though I was on council for 12 years in the past and we didn't have this it was it was very informative and very useful and actually I'd like to make a suggestion that we consider something like that for summer like a uh, open house for folks I, I think people would really like to 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 have something like that I, I certainly appreciated it so thanks Scott for uh, organizing that you're welcome um, last night I, I got the honor and pleasure to uh, 
represent the city in acknowledging, uh, I think it was 265 uh, Whitehall students <coughs> having uh, attained a 3.3 grade average for many of them for multiple years. So it was uh, very encouraging to see so many students doing so well. Uh, I think that says uh, a lot about our school system. I think they're doing a, a good job and uh, I was very honored to do that. Um, Scott, do you have anything? I, I do. You have, it's, I guess, not technically an agenda report because it's not on the agenda, but you have a report in regards to the Colby Street sewer extension. The, uh, the two addresses, which uh, encompass four businesses, their septic systems have failed. They are hauling on a regular basis. Basically, you know, sewer trucks will come in, pump it out, and take it out to uh, Apple Avenue and dump it. And we've been working on getting an easement, getting the permits, doing the engineering. And at this point, according to the ordinance 2205, I'm informing council that I'm doing this as an emergency purchase, which will take probably about four to six weeks out of the process of advertising, soliciting, reviewing, uh, confirming. We will still go through that process, but primarily it's the advertising that is what we're skipping. Um, not not due to the cost to the property owners, but you've got four businesses, uh, very active businesses, that have got failed septic systems, which creates a health issue, obviously. Um, so I'm declaring that as an emergency purchase. It's about 620 feet of sewer line, so it's about a $30,000 expense. And we will continue to keep council informed as we move forward with this project. We're still hopeful we can get it installed uh, fairly soon. Uh, I think we got a little cushion because the ground's not frozen and the snow cover is going to help keep it from freezing for a little bit longer. Will there, will there be any cost to the businesses? Uh, there will be connection fees, um, as is typical with our uh, sewer connections. Uh, we actually got rid of the old archaic residential equivalency units years ago, so it's a flat fee, uh, I think, for a commercial business. You know, the connection fee is probably going to be five to seven thousand dollars. They will also have to pay for running that sewer line from the back of their build buildings and connect with our sewer line, uh, depending on how good their current septic sewer lines are. Um, that'll be their cost. We've talked to one of the property owners and he would like to be included in the bid, so we're going to add that as an option. We're going to have the contractors bid on the sewer main and then give a price quote for the two laterals to the businesses. Because it's going to be a lot cheaper with one contractor out there doing all of that versus three different contractors. And it helps a lot to have one person doing everything versus three people connecting the lines and maybe they didn't think the line was where it was supposed to be. So. Is, is uh, uh, Rivers Ace, the nursery there, is that already connected? Um, they, they are. Um, but we can't, they're connected out on Colby Street, but oh. we can't go any further on Colby Street. Oh. But there is that um, sewer main that goes to the south and that connects to Evergreen. the Evergreen Condos, yeah. which is located on your map. Mm -hmm. So they're already connected. Um, some of you might remember that not that long ago we rezoned the south half of that parcel. It's a T-shape. You can kind of follow the, the darker green lines on the map. Property is T-shaped and um, actually when it was on, under ownership of Weesey's, they had it rezoned, multifamily uh, residential, with the idea that they would, at some point, develop that. I'm not sure how many units they could get in there, but um, this extension will also um, increase their options as far as locating things. So they'll be served on two sides, well, down the middle and on the north side as well. So the green dotted line on Colby, that's water line? Or? Um, that's actually a really <coughs> for property line. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, this is the county GIS. They're not going to show any sewer or um, water lines. So the water lines are, are where are they? They follow the sewer lines pretty much? Or what? Um, the water lines, uh, I'm not exactly sure where they are. Um, I think those are probably in Colby Street, um, which probably limits because you need a separation between your water and sewer lines. Um, but I think the water line goes all the way down Colby and it goes out into the township and services areas in the township as well. So these businesses already have water? Yes, they do. City water. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Anything further? 
All right, we move on to public comment. Anyone liking to make a public comment, please step up and your name. Good evening. My name is Ed Whalen, 603 Mesquite Avenue. I just came along to uh, congratulate the newly elected, and particularly I like seeing the fact that we have some experienced members because I know running the city, there's an awful lot of memory, an awful lot of history, and an awful lot of complication going on, as you noticed when you read some things. <coughs> and uh, I'm glad to see we still have a new person on there. Uh, please look about you and take mentorship from them. These are wonderful people who have learned a lot and have a lot to share. Thank you all again. Thank you. Anyone else? Amy Martell, representing Big John's Pizza at 104 North Thompson Street. I'm just here today. I wanted to comment on how I've been feeling about what just happened over this past weekend. How the city, and I know you guys aren't directly involved in making the direct decision on what's going on, that the TIFA board is, but essentially you guys are all going to be held accountable because this is ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Purchase agreement is not public knowledge. It should never have been public knowledge. It's been absolutely embarrassing to have all of our personal business put out there on social media. It has affected our business negatively. We have lost business over this holiday weekend. And we're not okay with this. And it's a breach of contract. Hope you guys realize that. This should not have been leaked out to the public. There has been no sale on this property. I'm just absolutely just, just, just disgusted. I've been answering phone calls. I've been answering text messages. I've been answering emails. All kinds of things in regards to our business because so many people in this town, in this Muskegon County, Oceana County, and the other ones, because people come from all over the place to come to our place. They think we're closed. They think our business is closed. This is causing us a huge problem, emotionally, financially, and everything else. This whole thing has just been a hot mess. So I want to know what the city's going to do about it. All I know is I contact the lawyer. You guys got emails in your inboxes if you didn't already see it. I'm just done, and I'm sick and tired of being quiet about everything and going on about my day like nothing's happening. This city has really, really let us down. We've come along. About almost eight years ago I bought this place and been trying really hard to come alongside and to be a part of the city. We've tried to, you know, grow our business, make it look better, make it more inviting and everything else for everybody with no avail. We've just come up against roadblocks time and time and time again. And I don't understand ultimately why. That business has been there, Big John's has been there for 53 years. That building's been there since the 1800s. I don't understand the problem because we've added to this community. We brought people into this community. We have people that travel from Spring Lake, Grand Haven, and Hesperia, all the way from the other side of the state. People that live that have moved out of town that come here. This is the first place that they come. So I just want people to realize that we are a staple and everybody is just totally upset about that. I'm sure most of you have seen this stuff on social media. But it's also like I woke up to that on Friday morning. Um, on MLive and all the stuff on Facebook and everything else. Then I get a text message from my mom, okay? She lives out in Munica. About the ad in the paper for the Muskegon Chronicle. So all of Muskegon County thinks that we are closed. I'm just, just greatly upset because this whole process, nobody's reached out to us from the beginning to say, hey, we're, we're looking to move forward on this stuff that we have in the master plan or whatever and say, what can we do to w make this work for both of us? I went to the TIF board meetings. I went to a couple of them. I went to them and said, hey, let's work together. Can we share this space? Can we just split it up? Can we do this? Can we do that? No, nothing, nothing. I'm just greatly disappointed. Greatly disappointed. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else like to speak? All right, then we'll move on to old business. Do we have any old business, Scott? 
We do not, Your Honor. All right. Next up is Resolution 2342, <coughs> White Lake Fire Authority. I'll make a motion to approve Resolution 2342, the agreement with, uh, for the White Lake Fire Authority. And moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Yes. And, um, for for the benefit of the folks here, it, it's got able just to give a little thumbnail of, of the what, what we're doing here. We're we re upping kind of our agreement. Um, we we are um, the original 30-year um, articles of incorporation for the White Lake Fire Authority are due to expire. A committee of their board members um, met and discussed uh, some potential changes. So what's before you tonight is uh, uh, a renewal of that 30-year agreement, basically, for another 15 years. And it includes the city of Whitehall, Whitehall Township, and Fruitland Township. And, and nothing special to note along with the re-upping re of that? Well, um, there is a change in membership makeup. Uh, currently, it is three members from Fruitland Township, two from the city, and one from Whitehall Township. It will now be three Fruitland, two city, and two Whitehall Township. And there is uh, a basic change in the minimum required number of votes is moving from four to five. Um, and I think, uh, I don't know if, if the mayor or Chief uh, McCarthy would like <coughs> to add to any of this, um, but I think those are the two major changes. Yes, sir. So. Chief, if you would like to uh, address the council. Okay, if I <coughs> take the podium, perfect. Um, yes, uh, and welcome to the new members. Uh, we did uh, we had a conversation and did a little presentation a couple of meetings ago. Um, those are the, the two big ticket items. Um, they're not the only changes. Um, most of them are relatively minor. Update of an address going from 30, uh, 30 years to 15 years and just kind of more some some cleanup of the document, kind of bring it into 2023 from 1994. Um, but those were those are the two primary changes. Um, there was one change that was um, that was proposed uh, that has been voted down, um, and that had to do with uh, changing of the signatories. Uh, there was a uh, an idea on the table to go from the three signatures to having all the members being able to sign uh, in the event that we needed those signatories. Um, and uh, some other municipalities opted not to go with that. So that was that's reflected in the most updated copy you have. So that was actually changed uh, from the original and then changed back to the original language. Um, and that's why the strikeouts are the way that they are. So uh, a couple of other minor changes. They, uh, they opted to uh, elongate the time frame that someone who was a member of the authority uh, as an employee can serve on the board uh, post their... Uh, retirement or dismissal and uh, also they uh, spread that out to include some additional family members originally uh, it was mother mother father son daughter uh, they included aunts uncles and cousins in that uh, just to try to make sure that there <clears throat> if in the event there was a, a separation that was less than pleasant uh, that wasn't able to be infiltrated at the board level to try to make sure there was no conflicts moving forward so the vice chair looks like that was changed too. That could come from any. Yes, sir. Any yep, the, any other that yeah, that, that is correct. In 1994, um, the the original 30 year document had both the chairperson and the vice chairperson both coming from Fruitland. Um, Fruitland uh, conceded the vice chair position. The vice chair can come from anywhere, but they did retain the chair position. And any other questions, clarifications? I'm more than happy to answer them. So, I would I would like to, to say that I've talked to a, a lot of people in the community about this, and there has been some dissatisfaction with the the, the five vote uh, requirement to conduct business. Uh, questioning as far as uh, Robert's rules of order when you have seven people, uh, four members is a quorum but under this new contract it's going to take five people to be able to conduct business 
That that's basically the only uh, dissatisfaction that I've heard about this contract. Um, how un under the the thirty year contract that you had, how is how have the relationships been between the, the partners? Has there been dissatisfaction? Has there been there uh, the the last year or so has brought uh, brought about some. Uh, I will say conflict uh, much more than it ever was before. Um, there are some some differing personalities amongst uh, the the White Lake Fire Authority Board. Um, it hasn't negatively impacted us moving forward and doing business, serving the community. Um, and really, the sticking points were uh, the document you see in front of you. Um, the uh, depending on uh, who represented what municipality, they kind of had feelings, of course, about. Um, giving up seats or adding additional seats and kind of how the vote structure was. Um, they all had varying reasons as to why they felt that way, um, but there, uh, there, was some, there was definitely some discord in the process. Uh, this has been going on 10 months, uh, I believe, um, uh, of getting to the point of where we are now. And um, so it, it has not been sunshine and roses like a lot of the decisions are at the, at the fire authority. Um, but we were able to come to uh, the fire board and, and some of the municipalities have come to an agreement that this is a workable document for the for the foreseeable future. So, um, and that's, uh, it started off with a, with a small committee, which was half of uh, the fire board, three members, and uh, one from each municipality sat on that committee. Uh, changes were proposed, it went to the attorney, the attorney reflected those changes to make sure that uh, the wording and what have you was correct for a legal document. I uh, graded a lot of things, but creating legal documents isn't one of them. So we let the, let the big wigs handle that. Um, and then uh, there was some, some discussion. We moved forward, we made a few more changes. Throughout that process, it then went out to the municipalities. Um, one of the things, it, it, uh, it did go to Fruitland a little bit sooner than the Fire Authority Board would have liked um, because there was some suggestions and some things that were still um, conversations amongst the board members and uh, that caused a, a little bit of a rift because there were some assumptions and Fruitland Township that we were moving forward with things when the the fact was the majority of the fire authority board members hadn't seen that document yet so we were able to reel that back in and clarify that and uh, and then the document ultimately went out to the municipalities it came back with changes and uh, those changes are what is reflected in the most current document you have in front of you um, at this point, uh, Fruitland Township has uh, made their motions to accept or deny the changes, and um, they have accepted the, the document as you, as you see it in front of you. Uh, we, I spoke with, I had the opportunity to speak with Whitehall Township last night um, and did a, a question and answer session. Um, uh, Mr. Kroll is a Whitehall Township representative currently, and uh, so we went over some things last night, and uh, they're digesting and going to make their decision uh, in the near future as well. Uh, they opted not to make a decision last night because we had the opportunity to clarify and kind of much like we did a few meetings ago and again tonight. So, so have these, uh, <coughs> I guess, disagreements caused any disruption of service? Absolutely not. Um, the the disagreements have not caused any disruption of service. Um, if we continue to have disagreements, uh, there will come a point where it will cause a disruption in service because if we uh, don't have the article signed um, in the near future, uh, we won't be able to get on the ballot for our millage renewal. Um, and ultimately, and not to be too much of a doomsayer, but um, in a year we don't exist. And that will greatly uh, negatively impact the community. So um, the, the impact as far as White Lake Fire um, has been pretty much mine and the boards and the municipalities. Um, the, the staff of the fire department and the community have not felt the blunt of any of that uh, because we have handled it where we're supposed to, so. Yes. Um, I was on the fire authority a few years before I was, and I really appreciated learning about the fire authority and the, the good work that should do. Um, do you, I mean, what's the attendance been like? I mean, if, if, if that, do you anticipate that five um, member vote requirement be, being a problem based on what you've seen as far as people attending? No, so we, um, the, in the, the three, I, I'll, I'll speak for the three years that I've been the chief. 
Um, I did attend numerous meetings in back when you were on as well under the previous administration. The White Lake Fire Authority Board uh, has always um, had pretty, pretty loyal attendance. Um, with it being one meeting a month, it's, it's pretty rare that we're missing anyone. And um, we, we did have one, one member of Fruitland Township uh, ended up missing quite a few meetings uh, because of a job change. And when he realized his job wasn't going to change, he went ahead and bowed out and the Fruitland Township uh, within a couple of months replaced him and that new member has, has not missed a meeting yet with the, with the exception of one family emergency. But we, uh, we're we very well attended and uh, we're very fortunate for that. So, Do, do you have the ability to, to have a special meeting in the event that you have business to conduct and you don't have the ability to make decisions? Yes, ma'am. Yep. Um, as, as long as we follow the standard Roberts rules of, of notification, okay. uh, public notification, we, we can do that same as the city council. Is there anyone else that wants questions? I just have one minor thing related to the, um, on the last page of this packet, where it's on the certification for Whitehall Township. If you read that sentence, it says Whitehall, the uh, city of Whitehall. Um, and it's, oh, it's yes. not. The, the very last page referring to where Whitehall Township signs, yeah. it actually says City of Whitehall. Oh. Know, first sentence of the body. All right, perfect. And uh, <coughs> we'll get that corrected. Um, obviously, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, some of the, those names are out of date as well. Um, as we were going through this process, not knowing ultimately who was going to be where, we opted not to change those because um, it's plug and play, but I'll make sure that we get that updated before the before the final copy gets signed by the municipalities. I gotta ask you, what's the likelihood of these uh, disagreements um, being resolved? I mean, as far as as far as the disagreements regarding the articles, right? Um, the 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 re the resolution. If if the municipalities are happy with the way the articles are now, the resolution would solve that. Um, one one thing I do want uh, everyone to understand, and I, I told Whitehall Township this last night as well. Um, the articles of incorporation are designed to they are our document for fifteen years. If we don't want to do anything with them, um, if there uh, ends up. Uh, one month, six months, five years, ten years from now, um, they can be amended or restated at any time. So anything that we that the municipality agrees to at this point moving forward, if there is a change uh, in what the, an individual municipality wants to see or they want to see some things updated, um, we can reconvene and have those discussions. And we can the only the only negative impact to restating our articles um, is there's a fee associated with publishing them. Um, but other than that, there's no downside of having those discussions and going back and looking and reviewing them and going, okay, well, this worked for us last year. Is it continuing to work for us? Do we need to look to update or make changes? So while it is a 15-year document, um, that doesn't mean it cannot be altered if the municipalities see fit. Okay. One of the reasons we went to the 15 versus the 30, we initially had looked at the 30 again. Um, the reason we looked at the 15 now is because life is moving so quick right now. We don't know what the area is going to look like in 15 years, and we might be behind the eight ball somehow, and we don't want to be there. So that's why we, we cut that back to 15 <clears throat> from 30, and uh, just to make sure that we keep our ducks in a row. That was a and that was a board member. Uh, the board member suggested that to me, and I, I thought that was a great idea because uh, with our thirty year millage, it, it's no secret that um, you know we currently have two millages. We have a separate millage to replace our fire station. Um, we weren't able to do that with operating funds because we had grown, and so uh, the whole idea is being able to look at the reset and and be able to change. And if we can you know, forecast things at the thirteen year mark we can make an adjustment in two years, not in 17 years. So I thought that was a, a very good idea uh, from the fire authority <coughs> board members to do that. So means that I'll have to do one more articles before I retire, where on a 30 year, this would have been my last, but I'm willing to do that as my <laughs> swan song when I hang up my helmet, so. <coughs> so this, this is a, a living document that is able to be 
absolutely at, at the, the will of the partnership absolutely and if uh, and and that's what happened in 2013 the the board had some some different ideas and they went back and they did an amended and restated and the 2013 was what we actually worked from because that's been the document for the last decade from 94 to 2013 it stayed the same um, and there were there were relatively minor changes in the 13 um, but uh, but yes that's a, like I said it's a living document and as we grow and change that document <coughs> can be the same to make sure it it always aligns with not only what the municipalities want but what the fire board needs what the community needs all right, thank you, Chief. Absolutely. Thank you for the excellent job that the fire authority does for this community. It, my, my firefighters made me look like a rock star. They're amazing. <laughs> Do you want a reminder? Yeah, I wrote it on high two, but two All right, with that, uh, if there's no further discussion on this matter, roll call, please. Okay. Holmstrom? Yes. Willowbranch? Yes. Cavallo? Yes. Sitka? Yes. Zemer? Yes. And Salter? Yes. Resolution 2342 is approved. Next is Resolution 2343, Township Water Service Agreement. If, if I may real quick, Mayor, yes. just to get a little bit. It is it is going to be a 20 or a 15 year agreement. The resolution says 25 and the third whereas, uh, I, I guess that's a uh, problem of bringing up old resolutions and typing over and missing something. The body of the document is 15 years, okay. and further down it does refer to the 15 year, but there's that third whereas. Um, so if everyone re recognizes that we approved a 15 year. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're back to water, water service agreement. <clears throat> I will move that we approve resolution 2343 township water service agreement. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? I have a few questions. I'm sure um, Scott can answer them. <laughs> <laughs> now, to be clear, so is this all? Is, this is more than the commercial folks that we've been supplying. This is residential as well? Uh, correct. Um, just to give you a real um, quick rundown of the substantive changes, uh, we are going to a 15-year agreement, which you, you just heard a really good explanation why 15 years is probably better than 25 or 30. Uh, we've expanded the service area. We initially talked about expanding it because of the Silver Creek um, pollution issue. And when we looked at it, um, there's not much of the township that's left after we service the Kobe Street corridor, Walmart, and then north. So the negotiations was, let's just service the entire township, if it comes to that. I mean, that would still be up to the township to expand as well as um, the property owner's desire to have municipal water. Um, we also changed the, there, there was supposed to be a committee that met every year and the practice has been where Brian sits down with the super public works director, Brian Armstrong, sits down with the uh, township supervisor and just goes over, you know, what happened over the last year, new connections, where our flows are at. So we changed that so that standard operating practice was in the contract versus technically doing something or not doing something we're required to. Uh, another change is the elimination of the hydrant fee. That is not a significant source of revenue. That's just an old archaic um, process. The city got rid of the internal transfer for payment of hydrant maintenance fees. It's just part of our annual water system uh, maintenance expense. Um, so that's about it as far as the well, we also put in there that the city will be the exclusive provider of water. During the term of the prior contract, I don't know if it was uh, a desire to go somewhere else, cheap, cheap, seek cheaper water, which is apparently hard to say for me tonight. Um, and they actually approached the Northside Water System, uh, who have also approached the city of Whitehall about getting water from them. 
So we wanted to make sure that we are the exclusive provider because if we're investing a lot of infrastructure to provide water, the township goes somewhere else, then we've kind of not recouped our expense. Um, and that's, that's about it as far as the substantive. So yes, the, the, that's a long answer to say yes, we're going to cover the entire township if the need arises. I have a follow-up. I um, now when I was on council, I remember when we put our water fees up, and I wanted to really make sure. Um, you'll probably remember I pressed you to make sure they were warranted, mm -hmm. <laughs> just because you know water is something people have to have as kind of a basic need. But um, is is this is this going to raise our rates, or is it going to? How, how do we account for this in our, our water fund to make sure that we don't have to raise our rates? I, I don't mind helping our neighbors, but I, I certainly want to keep our water rates yep. reasonable. There is, uh, there will be no uh, effect to our local rates um, as far as this agreement or any expansion. The township's responsible for paying for the infrastructure. We um, take over. The, the future maintenance and replacement of that. But then again, that starts all, you know, with the additional customers, that brings in additional revenue. So that as, you know, 30, 40 years from now, when we're replacing uh, water mains out in the township, we'll have the adequate revenue. So the maintenance costs are not gonna get us? No, not at all, okay. not at all. You know, because it's all relatively new, everything that's been put out in the township, uh, and typically you'll get 30, 40, maybe 50 years worth of life out of a, out of a pipe. Okay. So no no raise to our water rates, right? Well as I know. As a result of this agreement. I know. In February you might hear us ask for an increase because of the entire system. But it's not an increase due to any water service out in the township. It's just overall cost of um, doing business. Plus, we did increase some. We've been bumping it up a little bit higher than we anticipated because of the uh, lead and copper rules. Um, we're required to pay all those costs up to uh, 18 inches inside of residences. And we've been doing that with any new services, any um, amended, or not amended, uh, improved services like we did on Mears Avenue. We replaced all the laterals. And I think we're also doing uh, 15 to 20 a year, because we're under a state order, everybody is under a state order to replace them all in 20 years. So we've been pretty aggressive on that. Okay, but, but, but coming, we, coming we have a, a, a rate increase. Um, Which you'll probably address with the... With, with next year's budget. What, one, one thing that a lot of communities do is they you know, they, they try and hold the water rates for a lot of reasons you're saying, and sewer rates try and hold them down. And eventually communities, I know Belding a few years back, increased water rates by 25% because they hadn't raised them in 10 years. And there's a whole new council at the next election. Um, what, what we're trying to do is the incremental to stay in pace with inflation and additional costs. I think we've been anywhere from 2 to 5%. Uh, actually, I think we went 10 because of the new state rule. I just, I just know that that's something that people have to have, you yep. know, not only for, you know, drinking water, but for, you know, their basic needs, and I want to keep it low. And I do believe that we are still, I don't know about food port, um, but we're either the, cheap, the cheapest, the most affordable water rates in the county, if not the second, because I know between City of Whitehall in Fruitland Township, there was a, or Fruitport Township, we were always neck and neck. You know, a lot of people say, well, this is the cost of our water, but then you add in debt and you add in readiness to serve. We look at the total cost of the customer, and we're still probably the most affordable, if not the second most affordable in the county. So we do, we do take that into account and try and, you know, squeeze expenses before we increase revenues. Steve. So this is a 15-year agreement, you said, right? Yep, 15 years. So it says 25 year on here. Yeah, that's what they wanted to change it. Yeah, and that the, the current one is 25 years. And down below that it says the new one is 25. The third whereas. Yeah, that, that's the one that should be 15. Okay. 
15 year agreement. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Oh, no. On page five, the last paragraph under restrictions concerning water customers, um, there's a limit of 313,000 gallons a day, but there's like a, a uh, the last few words there, um, 282,000 is a point of concern where they want to start negotiations. So where are we at now? What kind of number do we have now? And do you have a good projection of where that 282,000 might come in? Might come um, in? I can give you, I believe we're only at about 30,000 gallons per day right now. We are way oh, below 313. Okay. Um, okay. You know, a, a lot of the water usage, even as we expand to residential, um, th there's no processing type use of water. It's, you know, bathrooms at, you know, Big B's and uh, McDonald's and, and the home. So that's not a huge uh, consumption of water. So I think we're at about 30,000. It's, it's not likely to come up. Probably not. Within 15 years. <clears throat> Correct. And this will be the last one I have to negotiate. <laughs> so I got you beat. <laughs> He's not that much younger than I am. <laughs> All right. Is there any further discussion on this? Roll call, please. Filleran? Yes. Sit and go? Yes. Kavala? Yes. Holmstrom? Yes. Zemer? Yes. Salter? Yes. Resolution 2343 is approved. Next up is public road request. So, I guess I'll make a motion to consider this. Okay. Can we have a second? Yeah. yeah. Good. I'll second. In seconding. Discussion. I would uh, like to know if it does, is there added cost to the city or to uh, we have to maintain a road now, right? And plow. Can we Correct. plow in there already anyway? We, we have not. Um, and we have often gotten calls from the residents during the winter um, because uh, currently you know, until you take action tonight, it's a private road. It's always been privately maintained as far as snow plowing. When they came in with the development, um, they I think they built maybe two houses and put in the top, not, not the top, the base coat of asphalt. And then they thought they were going to build more houses, so they held off on putting in the asphalt. And I think it's been close to 15 years. Um, but I think just about every lot is now built on. And... Uh, Archimedes um, with Jackson Murky, uh, the letter from Gary Murky, went in and did the top coat uh, late summer and we did have Brian Armstrong and our engineers verify that they were doing it to our specs and of course Jackson Murky, they do a ton of construction in the county and West Michigan so we know that you know they're going to do a good job as well. So yes, uh, all future maintenance, again it's a brand new road and it's a very uh, lightly used cul-de-sac. I think there's a dozen homes in there, so it's going to have a huge uh, shelf life. Uh, asphalt typically is a 20-year fix, so this is probably going to have 30. Maintenance will be minimal. Snow plowing will be our biggest cost, but we will also add the street to our local uh, street, Act 51 map, and we actually receive money from the state of Michigan for major and local streets that are uh, certified by the state. So it'll be a cost to maintain, primarily snow plowing, but we will get additional revenue from the state of Michigan. How much revenue is that likely to be? Um, local streets um, <coughs> is always not as much as we would like. Major streets, for some reason, we always have an abundance and we're allowed to transfer money between major and local. The actual dollar amount, I don't know offhand. But we, I can take a look at that and see, because we, we certify the Act 51 maps every year. So I can take a look and give you a pretty good estimate as to what additional revenue would be brought in on that. Yes. Um, I, I doubt it's possible now, and I, I haven't been down there just down the street from me, but would we be able to look at, as we if we do start adopting you know public roads, maybe having us a standard of like bike paths or um, to add to our walkability 
Um, I've got my grandsons, and when they come, I know where I can go, where I can bike with them safely. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you can't do it if you don't have a bike path. I mean, I don't take them on those roads if I don't have a bike path. It's not safe, especially with distracted driving. So if we could look at um, adding something like a bike path, yep. that'd be great. Certainly. Okay. Then, the, then the rest of the roads too, Scott, okay? Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Whoops. All right. Do we need a roll call on this? I don't think so, do uh, Probably. We're accepting yeah, property. Yeah, accept well, properties. Not bad. Okay. <laughs> um, you ready for it? Is there any further discussion? <clears throat> All right, then roll call, please. Okay. Siginka? Yes. Philibrand? Yes. Holmstrom? Yes. Seamer? Yes. Cavallo? Yes. And Salter? Yes. We now have a new road. Or, I guess after it's legally published. Uh, next <coughs> is public comment. Um, this is where students would come up and introduce themselves to the council. Just your name and your teacher. Where you, what school? Hi, uh, Matt Leatherman from Mr. Brunson's 7th Hour of Montague High School. Thank you. We'll sign your sheet after the meeting. Is there any further public comment? Yes, sir. P. McCarthy, 1300 Delaney. I didn't want to be out of order and shout thank you from the peanut gallery after I had sat down. So appreciate the support, not only with the Articles of Corporation, but the city of Whitehall has historically been a huge supporter of ours, and, and we greatly appreciate that. So thank you again. Thank you. Anyone else have anything you want to say? We're adjourned.